I'm Ann Churchland, a neuroscientist at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York. And today, I have a confession to make. I can't sit still. I'm forever clicking pens or rolling around napkins in my hand until they form funny little balls, or even rocking my, chip, my leg incessantly and driving everyone at the movie theater crazy. I got in trouble for this as a kid at school, and as an adult, I always felt bad because I'm a scientist. I'm supposed to be a deep thinker. And don't deep thinkers usually sit there motionless, deep in thought? That's always what I worried about. But recently in my laboratory, we made some observations that made me wonder if this was really true. We studied decision making and we measured neural activity all across the brains of mice that were trained to be experts in visual and auditory decisions. And what we found when we looked at the neural activity surprised us a lot. Most of the activity that we saw, most of the firing of the neurons, had nothing to do with decision making at all. It had to do with movements that the animals were making while they were engaged in the decision. And these movements seemed at first really to have nothing to do with the decision at all. Mice made a lot of idiosyncratic fidgets, sort of of the kind that humans make as well. But when we thought about it, we wondered that whether this made sense. After all, our brains evolved to move the body around. And maybe what it means to engage in a difficult cognitive task is to hijack that machinery that evolved for movement and use it for something else. And if that's true, then it's natural that sometimes when we're deep in thought, that these movements would emerge from our bodies, reflecting the, the, the movement focus of the neural machinery underneath. So I think what I hope everyone will remember is that for many of us, what it means to think is to move.